Hi, I'm Sam Horn. This is what's coming up next on What Is Your Pregame? Fenway was almost gone. Can you tell us a little bit about that? We're going to be rolling the Walter roll. It's pretty good. Well, I know I can shoot three, so I think you and I should go to the court. It might get ugly. Hi, I'm Sam Horn, and welcome to What Is Your Pregame. And over the next 30 minutes, we're going to visit with one of your favorite Celtics, Sir Walter. We're also going to visit the offices of the Walsh brothers and find out what Richard Walsh has on his agenda next. We're also going to go to the kitchen of Fuji, and we're going to find out what's the main ingredient. And while we're there, we're going to spice it up with some of the Latin boys from the summer. To finish up, Walter and I are going to go shoot some trees. So sit back and stay tuned for What Is Your Pregame? Walter, how you doing today, buddy? I'm doing well. Thanks for coming out yeah. having lunch with us today. Yeah. So tell me, I know you were a first round pick. I was a first round pick. What is that like? That was awesome. I, when you finally see like all your hard work paying off, a new life beginning. So I mean, it was just cool, man. Something you always dream about and then to finally hear your name called up there, man, it's awesome. Now you're the summer league coach for the Boston Celtics. How fun is that? That was a lot of fun, um, especially being in Las Vegas. And every game was sold out. So it, it, was, it was a little different. You don't, you don't really like coach and no one's in the stands. The games were sold out, so it was real, <laughs> you know? So it was like, the games are all on TV. So, um, you know, it felt like a real, a, a really real situation. So it was, it was awesome, great experience. Well, now that you're a coach, our show is about your pregame. Mm -hmm. When you were a player, what was your pregame as a player? My pregame, man, was just really listening to a lot of loud music, good music. What um, good music? What, give us well, I'm an R&B guy, so I was like boys Ben and Joe to see, um, the baby face, because I really liked that type of music. But as I got closer to the arena where you try to get your nerves <laughs> and stuff going, I had to put in um, the Notorious Big or uh -oh. some Eminem, you know, you know, get me get ready. Oh, yeah, get fired up. Get fired up. <laughs> so, so the big life after death CD was really big in my pregame. Did you have any superstitions? Is there anything that you just had to do it a certain way? Uh, no, getting to the arena, I had to take the same way to the arena. Like driving, previous, or dri oh. driving in, driving in, walking in. Um, you know, I, I got to try to get the same parking spot. You know, just little things like that. If I went in one door to get into the arena, I had to go through that same door. You know, so it was really, Silly stuff like that, but you know, wearing the hot, the, the, the high socks, the wristband, the headband, so I had all that going on. <laughs> so let me ask you, that those sound like physical things, but is that the part that got your mental together? Was it important for the, all of those things to uh, fall in place? Or say for instance, you didn't get the same parking spot or something happened throughout your day, did that mean you were gonna have a bad game? No, not at all, not at all. That was just me just getting, you know, putting my Superman you know, put, getting my cape and they ready, like, all right, I'm ready, let's go. But uh, it, didn't ha it didn't have to happen exactly like that, but, you know, sometimes, you know, you play a little mental games with yourself. When something is working and you go into the arena or you're walking in the arena and you're saying hello, it didn't have any physical effect on my game, but, you know, it Thank plays you. with you a little bit. Thanks. All right. So I see that uh, we're here at a sushi restaurant. Uh, you're having rice, chicken. Um, Tell us, what would a pregame meal look like for you, and when, when would you eat that when you were playing? Oh, yeah, this is actually really similar to something that I would eat. Um, you know, whether like some chicken fried rice, or I would maybe go for some pasta, uh, some chicken teriyaki, chicken parmesan, which was a big favorite of mine. Um, probably like around 4 or 4.30 I would eat, just so the good stuff digest it and, you know, give me time to relax and get ready for the game. Walter, are you pretty good with these things? You know what you're doing? I'm, a, I'm an amateur, but you know, I can, I can get the job done. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's get back into it. Because of the technology of today, do you think that the players prepare for the game the same way you did, or are they more advanced because of the technology? I think they pre uh, prepare the same way. I think we did a really good job with what we had at the time. 
but I think now they can just take it to a whole other level. They can be out there shooting and have an iPad on the side to come over there and just see what they did, or let's go over these plays on the court with our computers, or let's just watch who you're going to be guarding tonight. So you have access right there on the court, and you don't have to wait to have team film and go through all that stuff. You have it right there. You know, even during the games, you can come by. But what happened on that play? Uh, let's, this is where you messed up defensively. You should have been right here at this time, and so. It's just, um, it's really more convenient and effective because you have it right there, right now. You don't have to wait till after a game to show them something or explain something. Well, you spoke of Tommy. And I <laughs> love it because I couldn't wait to do this interview because I wanted to say, Walter, yeah. where did that come from? I know it's your name, but um, it, it sticks to me today. And when I think of Celtics, I always think of the first person, Walter. Yeah, well, no one pronounces, no one in this state says Walter. They all said Walter. Right. So whenever he would say my name on the television, um, that's what just stuck. But Tommy was a guy who really appreciated the way I played, the hard work and the hustling, getting us extra possessions, was just doing all the dirty things. I think it kind of reminded him of the way they used to play. And um, he would just talk about those things and he would say, oh, I love Walter, every yeah. time I made a play. And that thing just grew. And I'm telling you, I still hear that 20, 30 times a day just walking down the street, you know. Everybody loves Walter. We'll see him later on in the show. Next up, the main ingredient, followed by a little Latin flavor. We'll be right back after this. Now, we are a 116-year-old fourth-generation family-held construction management firm of which I represent the fourth generation. Uh, in addition to our work at Fenway, we work for all of the fine institutions across the city from Mass General Hospital and Brigham and Women's to Boston University to Boston College and even across the river at MIT. Um, but with these clients comes very, very high expectations on their projects. So I can say, representing the fourth generation at Walsh Brothers, we build to perfection. Dadgar Insurance is a 30-year-old insurance agency with kangaroo being our symbol of protection. I am the big kangaroo protecting my clients in my pouch. We specialize in insuring real estate and restaurant risks and we don't discriminate about the size. Whether it's a two-family in Somerville or a Chinese takeout in Chelsea or a thousand-unit apartment buildings or a chain of restaurants, at Dodgar we insure it all. Looking for one of the best steakhouses in Boston? A place to mingle and socialize. Hang out before and after the game? Well, Del Fresco's is the place to be. Award-winning wines, great spirits, fresh seafood, and the home of the Double Eagle Steak. When you're looking to outlast your opponent, it all starts with your pregame. Del Fresco's Steakhouse, for when you want to be on top of your game. JP Fuji Group is the largest operating Pan-Asian restaurant group in the Metro Boston area with 10 varying concepts including fine dining and fast casual atmospheres. Guests of any JP Fuji Group establishment can always expect the highest quality ingredients, innovative menus, and superior customer service. I want to give them a present. I want to give them a gift and I love doing what I do. Nothing beats that feeling of give people something. I hope they can taste the love that I put on every single dish. Hi, I'm Walter McCarty from the Boston Celtics, and when I'm in Boston, I hang out with Sam Horn. What is your pregame? Welcome back to the main ingredient. I'm here with Ming Chow. He's the executive chef for all the Fuji Group restaurants, 13 of them. We're going to be rolling the Walter roll, which Absolutely. is very high protein, right? Me? Absolutely. So we have a uh, seaweed right here. I'm gonna show Victoria how to do it. Some tuna, some salmon, and then uh, some avocado. Victoria, here's your rice. We, you know, put your finger right here. Okay. Slowly put it down like this. So we gonna put the tuna. So this tuna we using today is a uh, bluefin tuna. It's okay. uh, local. It's just from the Cape. Some salmon, and here's some avocado. So you can, you know, you can use your hand. Put your finger in the bottom. 
do it like this. Roll it up. Not too bad. Wow, this is the you're doing. First time I ever did this. Wow, amazing. And then <laughs> <laughs> you put, a, you use a maki suit and put it okay. over it and make it nice and tight. We got cut it and we got plate it on the plate. Okay. That knife looks really sharp. It's pretty good. Keep it away from me. <laughs> <laughs> so we got plate it like this. We put it down. Wow. <gasps> that did a really good job. Uh, I'm telling you, you know, every, we got put a little bit of spicy mayonnaise. And this is a little bit of a uh, soy glaze over it. Now where's the crab from? So Pacific. This is a particular Pacific crab. Yep. And then we, you know, we put a little bit of caviar in there. Ah. You're like an artist. You keep bringing some little extra ingredients there. You know, it's one of those things. You know, when it comes to uh, sushi, you know, it's you know, it's all about how much you care and how it looks like. You know, yes. people always look before they taste it. You know, you have to be look outstanding before you serve it. And a beautiful flower, edible. Yep, you put a little bit of uh, pansy. I don't, I don't know if Walter's gonna like that you're putting a pansy on it. <laughs> we'll see how he reacts to that. So, bam, here. It is beautiful though. Well, thank you, Ming. Course, thank you, for, as usual, fantastic dish. And now we have a new sushi roll called the Walta. You're watching, what is your pregame? What's your pregame? Thank you. Hey Walter, it's gonna take more than a sushi roll to beat me shooting trees later on in the show. Up next, our boys of the summer share with you some Latin flavor. Pre-game, just, I mean, just, li I mean, listen, music, listen to music, just. What type of music do you listen to? Uh, so Christian music, music. I like to hear Christian music. Okay. Uh, just, I like to just be calm before the game, just trying to, I mean, keep everything simple. Just communicate with, with, uh, with a pitch, whoever is pitching, just trying to be prepared for the game. All right, you say you like to eat a little bit before the game, you eat light. What type of meal would you have before the game? Uh, before the game, just like a protein bar. Nothing, protein nothing. Bar, yeah. that's it? Nothing big. I, don't, I mean, I feel like a, when I eat something big, I, I, I mean, I feel too full, so I look like I can't move. Oh, so that keeps I'm, I'm, I'm already, fast on the, yeah. on the base. Track, I'm, I'm already right? slow, so I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't really put a, a lot of food on my, on my body. So I think something like an energy drink before, before the game, just, uh, like I said, just keep it simple, just keep my mind just free. Uh, trying to just concentrate on the game, just trying to do, do whatever I can to help the team to win the game. Uh, obviously, now as a coach, I can eat whatever I want. <laughs> but when I play, uh, maybe a, a chicken breast, uh, maybe some peanuts, something that that, that burn fast, uh, salads with no dressing, uh, some raisins, uh, supposed to be really good. You know, something that is really light that, that you feel the energy to go out and play uh, a nine-inning game. My pregame before go to a stadium, I try to eat healthy, okay. more I can, to take care of my body first. Yep. You know, when you start getting old, you have to take care of your body. Body first. To be success. And then I go to the stadium, I look for video, who gonna pitch the, uh, that day, what kind of approach I gonna be against him. Uh, okay. So technology is a very important part of your pregame because yeah. you're always going to check up on the pitchers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they always have meeting the pitchers, how they're going to pitch us. So we have to take advantage of the video, yeah. how we're going to attack them. Okay. Since you've been here in Boston, the team's been doing very well. You're like a catalyst. Is there anything that you've done differently since you've been here, or are you just basically playing your game? I play my game. I play my game. I be in here. And in different situation with the Yankees. So I don't really know how the fans hear, how the situation. And I try to slow down everything around me. Yes. I kind of funny guy, try to laugh in. <laughs> I, it doesn't matter if we tie in bottom the night. Yes. Try to have fun, try yes. to make people slow down. So um, we're listening to music at the ballpark. What type of music you listen to? I like everything, the situation, but Latin music is the best for Latin me. Music? Yeah, reggaeton. 
Uh, is there any particular song or just music? Music, just music. Just music. I don't want to think about anything. Just about focus, pull the picture, and how we want to attack him. Cuando estoy en Boston, paso el tiempo con Sanhorn, la bocina. Where is your pregame? JP Fuji Group is the largest operating pan-Asian restaurant group in the metro Boston area, with 10 variant concepts including fine dining and fast casual atmospheres. Guests of any JP Fuji Group establishment can always expect the highest quality ingredients, innovative menus, and superior customer service. I want to give them a present. I want to give them a gift, and I love doing what I do. Nothing beats that feeling of give people something. I hope they can taste the love that I put on every single dish. Hi, I'm Sam Horn, and welcome to What Is Your Pregame, a new show full of flavor and with a little twist. When I'm in Boston, I hang out with Sam Horn. What is your pregame? We'll bring you up close and personal with some of your favorite CEOs, celebrities, and athletes to find out their pregame. <laughs> we will take you behind the scenes at some of your favorite restaurants to find the best high-performance recipes. Hang out in the dugout as we talk pre-game prep with some of the game's best players and coaches. All this and much more on What Is Your Pre-Game? <laughs> You're watching What Is Your Pre-Game? We'll be right back after this. Manny Machado for the Baseball from Baltimore Orioles. Every time I'm in Boston, I hang out with my man Sam. What is your pregame? Welcome back outside of beautiful Fenway Park here with none other, Richard Walsh. How you doing, buddy? All right, Sam, how are you? All right. See you. All right, there's a lot of history between you and this ballpark. Why don't you enlighten us a little bit? Well, there, there really is. Um, I'm a very fortunate individual in that I'm fourth generation ownership of a family construction company right based right here in Boston, started by my great grandfather and his brother. And I could tell you a long story, but really starting as two church builders, we, you know, over the first couple of decades start to expand into what Boston is. And Boston is great institutions and great facilities like the one we're standing at today. So um, we've had a lot of great um, experiences in construction for institutions from Mass General Hospital to the Boston Seven New Orchestra. But yeah. So I, I even say, you know, we started as church builders. Well, here we are back again at, <laughs> at a church right there. There's the Cathedral of Baseball, I'll tell you. Wow. So I know your family's been around for 116 years, so you got a lot of history as far as your knowledge here. Uh, Fenway was almost gone. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it, it's, it's true. We have um, worked over those 40 years for five different ownerships, starting early with the um, Haywood Sullivan, Buddy LaRue era, all the way now to, of course, Warner Henry, Lucchino, and Sam Kennedy and company. But um, there's been many different opinions and different <laughs> viewpoints on that. In fact, our company alone, at one point, we had advised the team that we thought maybe was rebuilding was not an option. Right. And at one point, as we looked down Yaki Way, <clears throat> in 1999, there was a signed agreement that actually Old Fenway would become a tourist destination, and then as you come down, you take a right-hand turn oh. into the, what, this triangle now that would become a brand new Fenway Park at one point. But then, cooler heads prevailed. It's probably not the right <laughs> term, but regulatory issues and, and Boston and historic groups, but the current ownership now very much dedicated um, their efforts to keep Fenway in place, keep it the shrine that it is, and we've done all this, you know, most of the recent work here over the past couple of decades, so it's been really exciting. Up here on the Green Monster. So tell me, 
How tough was it to get this right up here on the Green Monster? As I had mentioned before, Sam, we, as our firm, was lucky enough to have been working here for three generations prior. But then the new ownership came in, uh -oh. Werner Henry Lucchino. And we were somewhat intimidated, and we wanted to make sure we had our ducks in a row. And in fact, we were awarded this as the very first project. Right. And <clears throat> it took up, you know, they had just taken over the team. And even the authorization, you know, we talk about a five month window of construction, really didn't come till about Christmas. So, was that, that a good Christmas present? <laughs> it was a good Christmas present to get this project. But unfortunately, we had the worst winter, I think, in 20,000 years. It became literally on, on Lansdowne Way here, Lansdowne, the North Pole of America literally 10, 15 degrees below zero every single night, you know, snowstorms, and a lot of the work, you didn't see, it was geotechnical underground, which was weather sensitive, right. but absolutely the toughest job that we have done here. <laughs> We've done bigger ones, smaller <laughs> ones, but this was tough up here on the Monster. So let me ask you a question. We, we talk about stress, pressure, and we also talk about fun. Which one is it? Oh, it's fun. <laughs> it has to be fun. You know, maybe there's types of stress, but if you are in a situation where when you get up in the morning, stress is telling you not to jump up out of bed and, and, and do it. it, it has to be fun. Everything that you, you know, part of your life, the work that we do is fun. Just look at the results that we do from what we do. Is it difficult along the way? Does it take a lot of collaboration and hard work? Sure it does. But no, it's fun. It's got to be fun, Sam. I want to ask you the same question. Well, it is. It's both. A little bit of both. And most important, though, let me just ask you. When you did run into those stressful moments, how did you deal with that? Where do you go? I honestly, I think, you know, there's been many terms used for it over the years, partnering, teamwork, but I, I really do call it collaboration. Mm. I think construction in the olden days was kind of an adversity-based uh, industry and they'd be fighting and you're wrong and you're right. But then as we've started to come out of that over the last three or four decades, partnering, collaboration, looking to your teammates, much like baseball, much like a sport, um, it's, it's those who surround you, it's respecting other people's jobs and your job and working together. It's about collaboration, it's about teamwork. After speaking with Richard Walsh, I found out that teamwork is what's most important. It's gonna take a team of Walters to beat me shooting threes. We'll be right back after this. Looking for one of the best steakhouses in Boston? A place to mingle and socialize. Hang out before and after the game? Well, Del Fresco's is the place to be. Award-winning wines, great spirits, fresh seafood, and the home of the Double Eagle Steak. When you're looking to outlast your opponent, it all starts with your pregame. Del Fresco's Steakhouse, for when you want to be on top of your game. We are a 116-year-old, fourth-generation, family-held construction management firm, of which I represent the fourth generation. Uh, in addition to our work at Fenway, we work for all of the fine institutions across the city, from Mass General Hospital and Brigham and Women's, to Boston University, to Boston College, and even across the river at MIT. Um, but with these clients comes very, very high expectations on their projects. So I can say, representing the fourth generation at Walsh Brothers, we build to perfection. Dadgar Insurance is a 30-year-old insurance agency with kangaroo being our symbol of protection. I am the big kangaroo protecting my clients in my pouch. We specialize in insuring real estate and restaurant risks and we don't discriminate about the size. Whether it's a two-family in Somerville or a Chinese takeout in Chelsea or a thousand unit apartment buildings or a chain of restaurants, at Dadgar we insure it all. Hi, I'm Richard Walsh, and when I'm in Boston, I hang out with Sam Horn. What is your pregame? Before we go to the court, let's check in on Victoria with our Fan of the Week. 
I am a breaking news reporter for WKRN ABC in Nashville. And the breaking news is going to be the Cardinals Red Sox win. beat the Cardinals. Cardinals win. The most runs ever <laughs> scored at Fenway. Pandemonium. It's crazy in the street. I'm going to come look for you. <laughs> I got to get out of here. <laughs> You're yeah. a reporter. Yeah. You're up late. You got to go on that set. Yeah. What do you do in between to get your energy level up? Uh, coffee, coffee, coffee. Coffee, Lots coffee, coffee. coffee. And uh, I don't know. I've, I've I've been known to do a few yoga poses to. Uh, yoga. <laughs> so you do some meditation. Yeah. Or just, That's. Or, or chaturanga. You know what chaturanga is? I'll show you. Chaturanga. Okay. Show us. Okay. I, I applaud you for doing that in the middle of this lovely, very sterile street. That's how we are, blue collar baseball fans. So. Really, you know, he auditions for a better job every day. Right? That's right. What was that move again? Chataranga. I can tell you one thing, he's certainly full of energy. Thanks, Victoria. Hey, Walter, I hope you enjoyed your meal. Talk is cheap. Let the games begin. Let's go shoot some trees. So Walter, do you still shoot threes? I can still shoot a little bit. But just a little bit? Maybe more than a little bit. Well, I know I can shoot threes, so I think you and I should go to the court. You have time? Let's do it. All right, so after we eat this good food over here at Fuji, we'll be right back, and on the flip side, we'll see you shooting trees. So you're gonna show me how to shoot it. I'm gonna show Walter how to shoot some trees. How about that? Everywhere we go, we gotta watch out for you know, lamps, little... <laughs> trees, signs. signs. Let's see if you can use that little backboard. Little backboard there, little backboard. Oh, luck, luck, <laughs> that was luck. So I see he left-handed. So I'm gonna make it easy for him. I'm gonna shoot left-handed, but he gotta shoot right-handed. All right, let's see what you got. Nothing but net. At least make it hard for me. I'm gonna go one hand on you. <laughs> All right. All right, I got an R. Here we go. Right. It might get ugly. Oh, hey, so close. Come on, get Walter a letter. <laughs> Folks, when you play horse, don't play against uh, Walter. <laughs> Thank y'all right. for coming out. Good night. All God right, bless. Here we go. <laughs> it's not over yet. It's not over till the fat lady sings. Woo, I guess she's singing. That's why they call you the greatest. <laughs> Folks, you've been watching What Is Your Pregame? My name is Sam Horn, and this is the great Walter. We'd like to say thanks to the guys who were on the show today, and we'd like to say a special thank you to our sponsors, Walsh Brothers, Dagar Insurance, and Del Fresco Steakhouse. Last but not least, a special thanks to you, the viewers, for watching What Is Your Pregame. You can always visit us on whatisyourpregame.com and other social media to find out what's coming up next. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Sam Horn. Here up next on What Is Your Pregame? Nope. <laughs> up next on your pregame. <laughs> uh, uh.